Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Audi Cycling YouTube channel where today I'm very happy to say that I am going to be previewing the Velo Games Spain competition. I've had a little bit of time to gather my thoughts as to who I think are good picks. If you are new around here and you like Velo Games content then be sure to click the subscribe button because in a few days time I'll be releasing who I am putting onto my team. But let's go and have a look at some of the riders who are in this race. So... The big dilemma really is that Roglic is 26 points. This is the same price as he was last year, but do I consider Roglic to be worth 26? Well, last year he was the out and out favorite going into this race. And this year I'd say that that favorite status is in greater question than it was last year. So I'm not sure if he's worth 26. I'd say that perhaps if he was 24 or 22, I'd be a bit more likely to pick him. But at 26 i think that if he is in good form he will likely win this race but whether you choose roglic or not is whether you think he is in good form for me i'm not absolutely certain but i would not be surprised if roglic went and won this race quite frankly the biggest challenge actually comes from Remco Avenepoel, who did the Giro last year, of course, and that is really the only Grand Tour gauge that we have on him. Of course, he seems to ride very well in Spain, and his very aggressive style of racing will suit this race quite a lot. It's just these multiple tilt-top finishes. We're not sure how he's going to cope with this, but for such a sensational rider, you know, at 22 credits, I think that it's worthwhile putting Avonapool on if you don't have Roglic, for example. And also the TT helps Avonapool quite a lot as well. Carapaz 18 has got to be the most consistent Grand Tour rider on this start list. And I think that at 8 for 18, that is quite a good price for him. Of course, he is probably going to be co-leader alongside uh, Carlos Rodriguez and Pavel Sivakov but the benefit with Carapaz also is that because he's on the Ineos team they'll likely finish quite high up if not possibly win the team classification which might not seem like much but if they were to take that competition on say stage six and carry it all the way to the finish include at the end of tour points that would include 170 points to each of those riders which is nothing to be sniffed at when you consider that's like the equivalent of finishing third on a stage so i think that carapaz is a good choice as is almeida at 16 he's gone down in price since the Giro, where he was 20 i think that this is a much more reasonable price for almeida his tt and like when a quick step his tt just doesn't seem to be very good this year in comparison to when he was at quick step he was no longer fight he's no longer fighting for the likes of top fives and tts he's more around scrapping the top 10 Saying that, I think that Almeida really suits this race. The lack of descending will help him a lot. And multiple hilltop finishes. I think that it's a race that really suits him this year. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Almeida finished on the podium in this race. I think that at 16, he's a very good choice. I'm not convinced that Mass is a good choice at 14. He didn't look good at the tour. Last year, he did really well in this race, finishing in second place. But he was 12 points last year. And he just finished top five in the tour. Which makes me think that for 14, Enric Mass is a bit expensive for my taste. I think that Sivakov, after winning Volta Burgos, is a good choice. Again, Ineos, with multiple options, I think that you could see riders going up the road, especially in like the chaos of stage 20, for example. Sivakov, I do rate at 12. A Yuzo, for such a sensational talent, like a Yuzo, 10 is pretty good. Consider, if you think back a few years ago, Pagacha in the 2019 competition was 12 credits, and then he finished on the podium. Is it possible that a Yuzo could complete a similar feat? When you consider that Pagat was 20 in that race and a user is 19 this year, you know, I think that it's possible that a user could be a really good choice at 10, but it is a little bit risky, I must admit. Keldman and Lutsenko, I expect to be domestiques for their respective leaders. I think that McNulty's pretty good. If he can replicate what he did on stage 17 of a tour multiple times in this race, he could be an incredibly dangerous rider. He's a pretty decent time trialist, and he finished 20th in GC of a tour this year. I wouldn't be surprised if he finished inside the top 15 in this race. I think that your best eight point rider is probably Time and Lensman. I had him on my team in Majira this year. I think that DSM are going in for him for GC, and he also showed in Majira this year. If he drops out of GC, he's a very proficient stage hunter. And he's also got that strong time trial to back him up as well. So that's the all-rounders. The climbers, you've got Hindley at 18, which I think makes a lot of sense. Him and Carapaz are the same price, interestingly. Uh, I would say that if you had to pick one of the two, probably go with Hindley. He seems a little bit like faster in sprints and stuff. I think that overall Hindley might just have the edge in that sense. He's a very good choice for a podium pick, uh, for example. I think that Yates, very volatile, 
can sometimes do really well on a race, can sometimes just DNF. He did a very good TT and won another stage of Azura this year. I think that Yates goes very well in Spain. So I would think that he could be a contender for the podium. And I think that for 14, that's very good. It's worth noting the last time he did the Vuelta was 2018 when he actually won the race. 12 point riders, you've got Alaphilippe and Higuita, who I expect to be fulfilling a very similar role in terms of being a domestique but also having stayed like hunter responsibilities at 12 points it's quite expensive for a stage hunter i think there are better options further down especially when you consider that the likes of miguel angel lopez and carlos rodriguez are also 12 points i think that these two are very strong in terms of being able to go for gc i think that lopez at 12 is highly underrated and although he has been getting up some questionable things recently. In terms of a Vela Games pick, he is a very good choice at 12 when you consider that last year, if he actually finished the race, which he didn't, but if he did finish, he would have got somewhere in the realms of 1,700 points, which is nothing to be sniffed at. I think that Lopez is a good choice for 12. Rodriguez at 12, a little bit risky. He's such a good talent, and I do think that he will go well in this race. I'm just not sure that for 12, that's the best choice. I think that Lopez is a better one. 10 point riders, I haven't trusted Carthy in a few years now, quite frankly. He hasn't been that great since the like COVID welter where uh, Carapaz finished second and Roglic won. I think that Haig for 10 is pretty safe when you consider that he will likely be the GC leader for Bahrain. Lander had his chance in the Giro, and I think that Mader and Pauls will also be domestique for Haig. So for 10, I think that he's pretty safe. Kush usually goes really well in the welter, so again, another decent pick there. I think that O'Connor at 10 is probably the best. 10 point pick out there when you consider that he left the tour so this is now an incredibly big priority for ben o'connor if he finished outside say the top seven in gc i'd be quite surprised i think it's quite possible that he could get over a thousand points in this race pretty easily nairo if he complete if he can do what he did at the tour i think that he is a good pick but i'm just not sure how the fatigue is setting in his legs mike woods didn't do that great in the tour and i don't expect him to do massive things at the vuelta uh, and to be honest, eight point riders, Boitlago will likely go for some stages like he did in the Giro. Chavez hasn't looked back great since the Dauphiné. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Jan Hurt, of course, going to Quickstep next year. So I'm not sure how high his motivation is going to be in this race, but he's a fantastic stage hunter. And with the multiple hilltop finishes, I think that this race really suits him. Maida hasn't looked good since the Tour of Romandy. I'm not sure what's going on there. Luis Mienkes was six points of the Tour. He's eight points here. I'm not sure about what his kind of role is here. Intermarche have so many climbers that it's quite a saturated climber team so it's very difficult to tell if you're going to pick the right one or not. Nibli, this is his last Grand Tour, he'll want to go out with a bang. Pino can blow hot and cold but if he is on form then this is going to be a great race for him. Elan van Vilde I do like at 8 but he is going to be a domestique for Remco Avenepoel. A lot of the results that van Vilde has had this year including I think at Volta Catalunya and also at the Tour de Suisse doesn't represent how good he's been going this year because he DNF'd those. He did really well of a recent Vuelta Burgos, but at eight, it is quite expensive for a rider who, A, it's his Grand Tour debut, and B, and he's a domestique, so bit 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 risky, I must admit. Six point riders, you've got so much value here. You've got Clément Champoussin, a winner of a stage from last year. I think that Kenny Ellison is the best six pointer going, like no joke. He finished top 10 in GC in the Vuelta Burgos. He also is one of the only climbers on the track team, the only other one really being Juan Pe Lopez. Elisondas just got so many opportunities here. He's in good form. I think this could be a fantastic race for Elisond. Mark Padun, again, hasn't really looked himself since the Dauphiné last year, but if he can refine that form for six points, he's going to be an absolute steal. Sebastian Leichenbach has looked very good this year, very, very consistent in terms of GC results. Just go look at his PCS. And that'll just show you like how good he's been doing this year. Ryan Tarame is another, of course, climber for Intermarche. Verona and Vine, I expect to go very well in this race, especially Verona. He had a little bit, in my opinion, of a disappointing tour. I think that this race could definitely suit his characteristics a bit more, especially if Mass doesn't do very well in GC. Sprinters, I think that Malia will likely win quite a lot of stages, possibly like three in this race, especially, you know, the two one uh, stages two and three in the netherlands i think it wouldn't surprise me if he won both of those i think that he will be a better pick than pedersen probably i think that 12 pedersen is quite expensive for a guy who's not like the fastest sprinter in the race and also doesn't have a very strong lead out ackerman will probably pick up quite a few top tens but i don't expect him to win that much same goes for bennett although bennett did look pretty good at european champs the other day so it's good to see him back in such good form bennett of course has a few lead out men but not too many but i do expect that bennett 
could have a higher chance of winning stages compared to Ackerman. I do think that the best value for money pick would be Caden Groves. Do I think that Groves will win stages? Probably not, to be honest, but I think that he'll be very consistent. Bike Exchange bring a big horsepower train to back him up in a lot of the sprints. I think that for eight, Groves is a really strong choice. Gerben Tayson won a stage of a Tour of Poland, so that's an alternative pick. And if you really needed to save some credits, I'd probably go with like Einhorn, possibly, because he picked up a few top tens in the Vuelta last year, so you could go with him. Ethan Hater at 10 points as an unclassified rider is a good option. Could he get like a 1,000 points? Probably. I expect him to get somewhere around 800, 900, to be honest with you. The, the time trial as well. He should probably be finishing top three in that as well. Can he contest the sprints? His positioning is a bit of a worry. He doesn't really have a lead out train other than, say, like Plap and Ben Turner. So... It's a little bit up in the air as to whether Hayter is going to be a good choice, but I think that he is going to score probably the most points of any of these unclassified riders. Dennis is going to be on, a, on domestique duty, but should do well in the TT. Masnada will be a domestique, so will Plap. So all of those guys are going to be okay picks, but probably not the best value for money. Six point riders that I think are the best. I think Roger Adria is quite underrated. He's never done a Grand Tour before, but he's had such good results this year, including I think 12th at the Clásica San Sebastián. He finished ninth at the Mont Ventoux Challenge. And I think that just in general, he's a really strong climber for the Equipo Kern Farmer. And it wouldn't surprise me if he gets multiple top tens in this race. Bruno Amaral, the French TT champ, should be finishing inside the top five in that TT. He's a decent enough climber where he could contest a couple of the medium mountain stages, but I think there are also some better choices. What's worth noting is that D DSM with Nikius Art and John Dagenkolb, Dagenkolb of course being a little bit further down, neither of these guys are classified as sprinters, but I think that one of them will be sprinting for DSM. I'm just not sure which one, so I think that's a very under the radar choice for you to go with. Samueli Battistella, I think is a decent choice, but Astana might just rein them all in to Miguel Angel Lopez. I'm not really too sure. Uh, Cabeda finished 19th in GC last year in this race. Cavagna is a decent one for the assist points on Avonapool, but also a decent TT result, I expect. Steph Kras, a very consistent GC rider this year for Lotta Sudal. I think that he could finish top 15 in GC. Degen Cobb, as I just mentioned, never for the reason for him. Chris Froome, six points. What the hell's going on there? Could he be a good choice? I'm honestly not too sure. He, of course, finished third up out of Duez. Can he repeat something like that in this race? I'm not too sure. I'm not going to like build up too much hype about it, just in case we all get let down. Juan P. Lopez, six points like he was in the Giro. Probably a very good choice, considering that he's one of the only climbers for Trek in this race. Angel Maglazzo won a stage in this race a few years ago. I honestly think that the best six-point rider is Rudy Mallard, considering that he finished very high in GC in the Tour de Land. That being the race that Michael Storer won last year but having, before having an absolutely sensational Vuelta. So Rudy Mallard, really watch out for him. I think that he is the best six-pointer going. Quentin Pache would be another good one for Group Palmer. I think they're going to have a very active race. Rob Stannard did really well in the recent Tour de Wallonie but lacks the terrain that really suits him. He'll be in the lead out, and there's not too many kind of puncher stages in this race for him to really sink his teeth into. Jake Stewart could be the sprinter for Group Armour FDJ, but I think he lacks the kind of top-end speed to really contest for the win. But could he pick up five top tens? Probably, which would make him quite a decent choice. Harry Sweeney, I think, finished second or third in the stage of a total land recently, so watch out for him as well. Antonio Tiberi, Blows a bit hot and cold depending on which race is doing. I'm not really sure how he's going at the moment. Turner and Van Baal will likely be domestiques. Maxine Van Hills would be a decent choice but hasn't shown quite great form this year. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. The four point riders, I have turfed through the start list of all these pro continental riders to try and find you the best ones. And here's what I've come up with. You've got Erko Barad who finished 24th in GC at Vivuelta Burgos and he finished 13th on that last stage, the one which uh, Joao Almeida won. He finished on the same time as Santiago Boitlago and Wout Pools. I think that for a four point rider, he finished very high up on that stage. It's very possible that he gets into lots of mountain breaks and for four points, it's not a massive risk. Marco Brenner did a decent TT at the Tour of Poland, but that's really what already shown this year. But is that enough for you to want to go and pick him? I think that he will have the freedom to go for lots of stages. You've also got Jared Drisners. He won the mountains classification in the Tour of Poland and I expect him to be 
a big animator in a lot of breakaways. He's a very, very talented rider. I do think that he'll get in lots of breakaways. Francisco Galvan, I think he finished in third place at the Grand Prix Ciclista de Marseilles, which was won by Amari Capio and then Mats Pedersen. So he's a very strong puncher and could certainly finish in the top 10 in some sprint stages, for example. But you also have the Spanish time trial champion, Raul Garcia Pielna, who won that on a very long time trial. It was like 30 plus kilometers. So I think that he could finish top 10 in the TT, but he also did pretty good at the Walter Burgos, finishing in 21st place on that mountain top. So I think that he's also a good choice for you to go with as a four point rider. You've got Jaco Hananen, who finished, I think in like fourth or fifth in GC at the recent Tour de Lain. He will be a domestique for Ben O'Connor, but he's finally showing some really good form as Jack O'Hanlon. He's had a couple of years where he hasn't looked too good, but I think that this could be the race where that all turns around. I think that he's looking in really good form. And then other than that, you've got Lepper, who I think finished in sixth in GC at the Tour of Slovenia this year, which was won by Pogaccia. He could be another sneaky one for some breakaways. If you are here right now and like you're still watching and you're not subscribed, then please consider it. If we could try to get up to like 750 by the time the Vuelta finishes, that would be amazing. Let me know in the comments down below who you are planning on putting into your teams. I'll try and respond to all of them and give some feedback so that you can try and make the best teams possible. And all that is left to say is to keep safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Salut!